anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? You know what? I'm doing fantastic. What, 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 how, how, I, was how, gonna, how long? I was just, I was just I, I, on you with the YouTube stuff. You really can't curse like it right away. And I thought you were going to go with a fan. <laughs> I mean, I tried, I tried to only curse in the back half of the show. If you've noticed, how, 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 how else can you, what else, what else can you say after a, after a great win against a top 10 opponent at their house? And you come out with a W in, in a spectacular walk-off fashion. Yeah, I know there was one play left, but, you know, well, I, I'm, I'm going to say it's a walk-off fashion there. It was a the great story, The story, the story is game. so much. The story is so much better if it's a walk-off. So everyone just edit your memories and we'll remember it as a walk-off touchdown. That's it's don't exactly Mark. Uh, I'll, I'll quote Mark Twain. Don't let don't let uh don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. That's 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 it. How hey, are you Kyle, doing, Jared? Normally, oh, I'm sorry. Can you ask me that again? How are you doing, Jared? Better than Lou Holtz. I'm going to edit that and make it sound better. <laughs> I'm going to edit that and I'm going to make it sound better. All right. I'm not, though. I'm not. I'm not. I, I, I haven't. You, Kyle, you realize how incredibly rare a mid edit a mid show edit is for us nowadays very rare why because i'm lazy but that's not what we're here to talk about we're here to talk about ohio state versus notre dame kyle what a difference a yard makes in everyone's feelings right now football man it's a zero sum game it's I, I, so many people are having such a different day right now over a yard <laughs> Over a yard. Yes, it's graphic dropped. Did my. Uh, I, or is there something wrong or am I, I don't know if I'm understanding you correctly. No, Um, Yeah. What a difference a yard makes, though. Um, says unstable connection on my logo. Must be you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that or it'll fix itself discord's been having fun today so we we're, yeah. we're, we're gonna keep moving forward though um but you, you know you, you look at this final score jared 17 14 and and you're gonna have a lot of Ohio states gonna look at it and say man the offense played terrible only 17 points against notre dame here and and then you look at this you look at the stats and it's not the not the greatest here house how state had yeah they had over 100 yards rushing mccord had 240 in the air only completing 57 percent. but you know these are two top 10 quality teams here in a good old-fashioned blue blood yeah program just down your throat running right just at each other here like that's thank you nomad yeah, yeah, red blood. Yes, you're, blue you're, you are correct. Blue blood is basketball. All the best teams in football wear red. This is a fact. All right, I'm good. I'm good with that. Yeah, the type of game that it's every every yard is a battle. Yeah, and, and we and we saw that and <laughs> look no further than the stats about fourth down. Yeah, I was actually legitimately <laughs> about to say. <laughs> You look, you look at you look at one, fourth down. See one converted fourth down the entire game, and it was on Ohio State's last drive. Uh, one for f five, I think was I think is what it was. Uh, I'm I gonna pull up real quick here. One for five or one for six. Yep. One for five. Ohio State was one for three, including that uh, that great fourth down conversion by uh, uh, by Fleming. Fleming. Mm -hmm. And then Notre Dame was over two there it was over two. Yeah, uh, including uh, the first, I would say, like signature play uh, by Styles. Uh, he uh, he and Ransom uh, tag teamed it, obviously. But the uh, the sneak attempt uh, by Notre Dame uh, that that uh, styles and then ransom right behind him blew up 
Um, great tackle on that play. Absolutely great tackle on that play. Um, that's that's the thumbnail of today's show. Kyle's going to throw that picture up for us. Uh, that's by the great Tom Orr. Yes. Um, that's not the thumbnail though, Kyle. You have to you have to go to the next one. The next one's the thumbnail. There you go. That's the thumbnail. There you go. Sunny Styles. Um, I, I, you know, he's, he's had, he's been great all year so far, but um, like I said, this is probably what you would call like the first, like signature play for him in, in that realm. Um, I, the defense played amazing almost all night. Um, they, they got tired in the fourth quarter uh, and they were having a real hard time stopping the run behind what is a tremendous offensive line for Notre Dame um, was Simon playing a lot more than normal. Um, I, I saw him down the line a lot more. I, I think they may have been taking. Um, I, I could be mistaken about this, uh, but, I, but I think when Notre Dame was trying to run the clock out, I think they took, I think they took uh, chambers out uh, and put Simon in because Simon's a little bit more of a bigger body run stopper. Um, I think is what was happening. I, if someone wants to correct me on that, uh, feel free. But uh, yes, and I believe that would be why. We need to fix that's... our pressure on D. You are correct, sir. Um, yes. I will say yeah, this. Ohio State has played uh, Notre Dame, a very good offensive line. A tr one of the best offensive lines in the country, Notre Dame. Wouldn't would not surprise me if you see all Western five of those, if, if all five of those players make it to an NFL team. Yeah. Uh, Western Kentucky has a surprisingly good offensive line, especially considering their level of play. Youngstown State, foreign FCS school, foreign FCS school, has a very good offensive <laughs> line. Um, Ohio State has played some really good offensive lines so far. But the edges still need to step up. Uh, and I, in, as far as consistency, uh, IU, I, I, I really don't know how to grade IU's offensive line. If I'm being honest with you, it was um, not good. It was, it was not good for for our for our defensive line against Indiana. Just period. I, I'll just uh, say that. But the the Indiana, or excuse me, um, late in the Notre Dame game, you did. I mean, JT also won the game last night. Like that has to be said. He yep. he came up huge, absolutely enormously huge. Nobody in, nobody really in the in yeah, the no. last drive for Ohio State. Um, yeah. would would we like to see that sort of disruption more often from our defensive ends? Yes. Um, but uh, he and Tyleek Williams, I, I think, won the game for Ohio state last night and even getting Ohio state, the opportunity to get the ball back for Kyle McCord and everyone to go down the field and get the touchdown. Um, because man, Notre Dame picked up, was it two or three first downs on their last actual drive? Let's, let's not count the flea flicker drive on their, on their last actual drive. Notre Dame got like two or three first downs on like three or four plays. I forget the exact numbers. Um, it's. Uh, and it, it looked like the game was over. It looked like yeah, the game it, was it, absolutely over. It uh, did, and especially then JT had. And, and, and so did Tyler Williams had some key plays that absolutely won the game. Absolutely won the game for Ohio State. Without those key plays, Ohio State doesn't get the ball back and it's over. Yeah, no, it, it definitely seemed that way. Um, if I go to that fourth quarter here, to, to the very end here. Um, do, 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 do. Here it was. Yeah, uh, first and 10. So Notre Dame had the ball at the 11-yard line uh, after Ohio State failed to convert that fourth down. They right away ran it. Ran it um, Oh no! They on on first down they got twelve yards on their second play they got eleven yards so they got back to back first 
first downs there. And at that point, it, there was, yeah, there was like just over three minutes, three and a half minutes left in the game. And everybody's like, oh, crap, this is this is it. Everybody was already starting to accept that Ohio State was going to lose at this point here. And then all of a sudden here, JT gets gets a gets a sack there and it makes it second and 15. Ohio State takes a timeout. And then Ransom makes a makes a um um no no it was uh, JT again made a uh, broken up the play there to make it third and fifteen, and then Proctor came up uh, big to to stop the run there and made it fourth down and gave the Buckeyes a chance to for one more drive there, but yeah no absolutely JT on that last drive was huge 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 and I don't think I don't think many people are really talking about about him and his efforts he did in that in that drive. Yeah, like I said, absolutely beyond enormous, like I said, game winning game game winning drive for JT before before the offensive game winning drive. There was the JT game winning drive. Absolutely, absolutely. He, he, yeah. he, 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 did, he, he didn't get his um his multiple turnovers or sacks like he did to get and just took over like he did in Penn State. Didn't have like one of those games, but he had he had flashes of when he really was disruptive and more so at the very end of the game when you needed when you needed your one of your best players to step up. Absolutely. Um, right, so let's, it would have been game over if he took a timeout. Great clock management. It, they had, I mean, I. it's hard to say because then the clock doesn't run off. Like, I, I know that the having that timeout when the you, the, you avoid that 10 second runoff, but at the same time, maybe you save. Um, it was a judgment call, and I, I still think he made the correct call, but it's just yep. it's hard to say because we don't have the counter narrative. Um, but oh. I, but I do I do think it was the correct call totally forgot on that pass breakup that was that that totally slipped my mind that was the one where jt almost had that to make it a pick six too oh yeah 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 (laughs) man how 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 crazy that would have been but but either way um i want to talk about the offense real quick here and then we'll go into our gradings jared uh mccord definitely you could definitely tell there was a lot of nerves in him, especially early on there. He had, he had went down a lot of check downs to Stover and you saw Stover really getting a lot of touches early in the game there. And, and you saw as the game went along, McCord really started settling in here and man, that, that last drive, I, I really feel that that last drive there, was his turning point to really come out to come out. And I think we're going to really see McCord just be so comfortable in the pocket. Uh, once Ohio state's back on the field here in, uh, in, uh, less than two weeks now, cause Ohio state's going to be on a buy this in week five here. Yeah. And it was, it was funny because going into the half, going into halftime, uh, the, reporter asked Ryan Day, you know, how's his young quarterback doing uh, in front of the big crowd and on the road and his first top 25 matchup. And Day basically said, he's dealing. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's dealing with it. He's trying. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a, gr- a big grow up game for Kyle McCord and he met those expectations. Um, he, I mean, he won the game. What else? What else? What else is there to say other than he he won the football game? Uh, mm-hmm. He made some incredibly clutch throws down the line. Um, absolutely enormous composure he found when he needed to. And I'm telling you right now, Notre Dame's biggest mistake that they made all night was blitzing him. Yeah, it made made him made him get rid of the ball a lot quicker. Made him be more decisive right away. I think with the way Kyle McCord's playing right now, um, I think the best thing you could do against him would be to like drop back 
and force him to think, force him to second guess himself. Anytime Notre Dame blitzed, it took guys out of the pass coverage and it forced it, it forced McCord to be decisive. And I I think that's exactly what he needed, to be honest with you. Yep. So yeah, McCord I thought had a had a good game and definitely a that that last drive really defined McCord and who he who he really is and someone who when called upon he's he's going to make plays here and I, I expect to to see that as the season goes along. Henderson, move it to the running backs. Henderson had himself a great game too. He looked. We we said we said this for the past two two weeks already. Henderson just looks like his first year at Ohio yeah. State. Very what, decisive. What, what a difference with, in a healthy foot makes. Oh yeah, he's just so decisive, and his cuts are there. Yeah, love love everything I'm seeing about Henderson. What uh, was what's his, his total yardage? He had a, he had 104 yards on 14 touches. Uh, and and a key pass interference draw, and a key oh. yes, and a key pass interference drop yes. Uh, yeah, that he he uh, he probably could have had the uh, touchdown reception to potentially. I mean, it turns out it's it's best that he didn't get it. But if he uh, that the he drew a pass interference. Uh, yes, fourteen carries. He drew a pass interference down the sideline on that last drive. That was a key play, and if he mm. hadn't been interfered, he has a great opportunity to catch it. Who knows if he actually does it's football who, who knows how these things play out, but um, he beat the guy so bad. The guy had to interfere him and that's also football. That's also a play. Yep. Um, I think it's one of the reasons why you didn't see like Marvin Harrison get more stats outside of his um, hyper extended ankle. Um it's a uh, it's it's a good week to have a bye week if you're Marvin Harrison. That's for sure. Um, that didn't look great. He obviously played. Uh, he didn't look like himself. Uh, I, I would say there were instances in which I saw him going back to the huddle with a with a bit of a, a hitch in his step. Um, so he's not all right. Uh, but we'll we'll see how bad it is going forward. You and do the grades oh, and, now, Kyle. Yep. Let's let's jump right into the grades here. All right. So first off, we will start with the coaching, the coaching staff here. Now, seventeen fourteen final score here. Both team both teams both teams have uh, left a lot of points on the field. There, Ohio State could have easily scored. 14 more points here and, and Notre Dame could have scored 14 more points as well too. But I, I think, I think as, as a whole, I think Ohio state, especially the defensive coaching side, spectacular, spectacular, great job of, uh, of stopping um, estimate of only having him 70 yards in that game here. Yeah. I'm really, really proud of this defense and, and when the offense needed to make plays, they, they did. And yeah, they, they didn't con- convert on uh, a couple of f- key fourth downs and that sucks. But I think as a whole, I really like the coaching, the coaching staff here and what they've done. So I'd give them, I give them probably an A. I was going to go straight A. I'm, I'm going to bump it up. I'm going to say an A plus you, you beat a top 10 team on the road. Um, we, we now know that the, you know, and, and, and we, we had been hoping the level of competition over the first three weeks was what it was. And I will maintain that Western Kentucky is an excellent offense, but I think we can now officially call the silver bullets back. Yes. Yes, absolutely. The, the defense is back. The silver bullets are back. The defense is back. I think we can now, because of the competition, we've seen them do it against. We can now officially say that, um, uh, I think that the offensive line was well, well, we'll get to the offensive line. Uh, so like defensive coaching, a plus, um, if, if nothing else, then for the totality of the transformation we've seen over the past 
season in four games. Um, Ryan Day, uh, he's now 74% against top 25 teams. And I know like Ohio State fans basically expect that number to be 100%. But I believe I saw somewhere where 74 uh, the D line is absolutely back chip daddy. I know the defensive line isn't playing up to the expectations that we want them to be playing up to as far as getting pressure, but the defensive system as a whole is absolutely back. Um, 74% I believe is the top winning percentage, active winning percentage for coaches. Uh, I believe among active coaches, 74% against top 25 is the best. I believe I saw that somewhere. Someone feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but 74% against top 25. Um, uh, tremendous. Again, you, you, it's a top 10 win at night in someone else's house against a team that deserved to be in the top 10 against the team that, by the way, just because this needs to be said, Hats off to Notre Dame and hats off to Marcus Freeman. He has absolutely turned that program around that. That is an a plus program right now. Um, what a tremendous job he's done there. Um, you know, I, I said it, I said it during know your enemy last year ahead of the Ohio state game. Uh, Ryan day is now 17 and six. Uh, 73.9% against AP top 25 teams. I thought I saw somewhere where that puts him as number one among active coaches mm -hmm. with that record. Yep, he yep, does. The okay. best record against rank, rank so by the way, I've, of any coach in the country. I'm done hearing that Ryan Day isn't a good big game coach. That is mathematically incorrect. Um, and Ryan Day's done. And by the way, so I bump him up for the A+, plus because Ryan Day's done hearing that's, that this team is soft. He's done. And if if you were like A or A plus, the 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 the, the post-game speeches, both in the press conference and coming off the field, gets him that plus. Yeah. Yeah. The reason I'm not giving the A plus there is definitely my coach. There there was definitely some questionable play calling and and he and he defended himself and sure, that it, it's fine. But there was definitely questionable plays calling, especially that that fourth down in the fourth quarter there um, trying to do a jet sweep. I understand that's the, he had a look and that's the play that they should call during for that specific look, but I, I didn't like it, but it is what it is. So, all right, let's move on to the quarterbacks here. Jared Kyle McCord, 21 for 37, 240 yards, no picks, no interceptions for the game. Why'd you say picks and interceptions like they were two separate stats? Sorry. <laughs> zero interceptions, zero touchdowns. I'm okay. not sure why I said that. Uh, and by the way, zero, zero touchdowns. There a couple, uh, some dropsies in there. He threw a couple touchdowns. Mm -hmm. the, the receivers didn't help him out a ton. Um, I guess so we, we, as uh, I'm going to reset this as I like to reset this. Um, we grade based off of expectation. What was Kyle McCord's job in this game? To distribute the ball to his playmakers, to not make any mistakes. He's not CJ Stroud. He's not CJ Stroud yet. He makes no big errors. Uh, you know, there's some, inter some almost interceptions, but th they, they weren't caught. There are some almost touchdowns, but those weren't caught either. Um, but when it came down to it, he won the game. Um, I like Kyle more than Stroud, Chip Daddy says. I like through four games, I like Kyle McCord more than I like CJ Stroud through four games. CJ, uh, Kyle McCord's not where CJ Stroud was last year not yet i don't expect him to be but through four games i think he looks better than cj stroud mm -hmm. yeah i'm I'm going to give mccord an a here uh everything everything that jared 
Jared said there. I'm just fantastic. You didn't you didn't turn the ball over, didn't have costly mistakes there. And he he got the A to me just because of that last drive. That last drive, he had ice in his veins there and was so calm and just throwing darts. Spectacular. Yeah. Spectacular. I, he he needs, you know, he he still needs to get his head around when this is what I, the exact thing I was saying to Kyle before we started recording. Once the game slows down for him, he's going to be a monster. He's not quite there yet. I don't think he's quite there yet emotionally because we saw him rattled in this game early on, which he's a young quarterback. That happens. Um, we saw he's 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 going like when when the pressure's really sort of there, he's going like two reads deep. He, he needs to go deeper than two reads, but he's a young quarterback. Yeah, that's yeah, we how definitely. That- we definitely saw that. Yeah, it seemed like just two reads and then he just bolts and it. And we we said this in, in our social screen, which, by the way, uh, discord that it's Lucas.com become a patron and you can participate in our week weekly uh, social screenings where we talk about where we watch games, talk and have a good time here. But, yeah, we, we were talking about this in our social screen here, Jared, that that he's just going through two reads and then just bolting, even though he had a good pocket. It's like, just stay there. Look for your third and one. Also maybe your fourth one. And also just sort of staring, staring down his check guy. You know, his, um, he missed a couple passes. Um, but again, if, 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 if last year's CJ Stroud had this game, I wouldn't be giving him an A plus as mm-hmm. a, so we, we, but we grade based off of expectation. So, Based off of this being his fourth ever start, he gets an A plus. Yep. All right. Running backs. Uh, Henderson Henderson gets an A plus for me. Henderson gets an A plus. Uh, obviously, Chip gets the the walk off touchdown uh, at the end of the game there. So, yeah, I'd, I'd give the running backs an A plus here for for when they get out in space. Yeah, they, they just they just look really good. We saw we saw some um, great runs uh, from from Henderson, and then Trey had a great had a great uh, catch and um, moved down and got a first down. I believe it was there on one of his catches. There, yeah, really like the running back group. Yeah, I I totally agree. Um, the offensive line isn't there yet. Uh, the all I think the running backs would be going totally ape shit right now if if like we yeah, just got one a, of the if we just got one of those tackles back if just one of if just if if Thanos had come back <laughs> if, if we could just have one tackle uh back from last year's team I think the running backs would be going totally ape shit right now um so but l- that's l- not l- what happened yeah let, let's talk about the offensive line then I I, th- I think that's 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 the big thing here. Um, it, it's it's tough because you got. I mean, we're hoping we're hoping to see uh, improvement from the offensive line here, and yeah, they, they only let up one sack it all game here. Okay, that, great, that's great. But uh, those those third and shorts, those fourth and shorts, and you can't get that leverage there to get that extra yard to get that those few inches there <clears throat> yeah G. I, baptiste was eating all game he was he was um, yes but i i probably well, give no, the I mean, offensive, the offensive line's, line's job to stop him uh, it's not me making an excuse that's uh, yeah I, 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 i'm going to give the offensive line like a b they, they say they, the they, fryer they, penalty was bullshit i the fryer penalty was bullshit Yes, I, I've, I've seen he was ju- he was ju- he, the guy he was blocking fell down. He jumped on him. Literally see an offensive lineman do that 20 times a game. I, I don't know what the I don't know what the deal was on that. Yeah, I, I gave the offensive line a B. I, I definitely definitely room for improvement here, but it's and getting I, better, but there's still a long ways to go. I totally agree with you, but 
again, we're, ba we're grading based off of expectation. And my expectations for the offensive line going into this game were pretty low. I'm going to give them an A. Did they deliver an A performance? No, but we grade based off of expectation. Um, and they exceeded my ex my low expectations that I had for them. Um, did they consistently run block all game? No, they did not. Did they have some costly penalties? Yes, they did. Um, yeah, they only gave up one sack, but was Kyle McCord running for his life on uh, several occasions? Yeah, he was. Um, but I had envisioned a much worse performance for the offensive line in this game. Yep. And ultimately, the offensive line did enough to win. Um, they get an A for me. But again, that's because we're grading off of expectation, not because they delivered an A performance. All right. I didn't position A plus. A plus. A plus okay. for me. I mean, I'll give you the A. I'm going to need you to sell me the plus. Sell, sell me the plus. Well, I mean, I don't need to say much about Stover and, and the receiving part. Mm. Seven catches, 52 yards in the game there, especially early on, making him that big target to get McCord to be try to get settled in the in the game here and and even the run blocks some of the blocks and i believe the one where henderson just went off there uh stover had a big block there as as well as i mean marv did as well too which unfortunately he got that was the play that he got hurt but stover made a key right. block there for for henderson to get around and to get that long touchdown so Yeah, the uh, farmer got the over. <laughs> all right, Kyle, you sold me. I'll, I'll, I'll throw in a plus two. I asked you to sell. I asked you to sell me, and you sold me. All right. Wide, Wide receivers? receivers. So, we're grading mm. based off of expectations. This is supposed to be the best wide receiver core in the entire country. Um, Ibuka gets an A plus. Abuka gets an A plus. Abuka for me. dropped a touchdown pass. An A. <laughs> but, um, you, but you don't. But you, you, saw, don't get to, you, you don't get you, to drop a touchdown pass and get an A plus. But you saw throughout the game here that they had their safety, just keeping an eye on on Marv there, and yeah. really reduced the number of looks that McCord could go to Marv, especially especially if. McCord was only looking at his first two reads. He's not going to go back and see if Marv's, Marv is open again here, especially against this kind of defense. So def, definitely very limited of what Marv could have done here. And, and part of that you could probably blame on the on the coaching staff to try to get no, more I, plays listen, open no. uh, for, for Marv there. But. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not even mad about that. I'm not even mad about that. If listen, you you have you got Farmer Gronk on the team, you got Julian Fleming on the team. Julian Fleming, by the way, we already mentioned it. it since we're in the wide receiver section, it is worth mentioning again. Clutch fourth and seven uh, to 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 win the game eventually to keep the drive alive that wins the game. Um, the only fourth down conversion of the night, and there were plenty of attempts. Um, so it's, it's worth reiterating. And one of the reasons why I will keep them at least an A minus, I might talk myself into an A if I keep going. Hmm. Not, I'm, I'm, but, give, I'm giving them a B plus for me. But again, there were too many drop passes. In that environment, um, it was too many drop passes. And again, like, we're grading based off of expectation. You're supposed to be the best wide receiver core in the country by far. And, and, and I'm not like to go back to what you're saying about Marv. Like, okay, you got Julian Fleming on the team. You got a Beck, a Mecca book on the team. You got farmer Gronk on the team. If they want to double, if they want to, if they want to double anyone on the team, literally just go to someone else. I'm fine with that. Great on the wide receiver blocking. 
which is why I'm going to keep him in an A minus and not go B plus like Kyle. I thought they did. I thought they had an excellent blocking game. They did. Um, mm-hmm. They they've been blocking well all season. Um, I, I will keep them at an A minus um, because of the blocking, because of the f- clutch Julian Fleming touchdown or uh, not touchdown, but fourth down. Um, Xavier Johnson had a key play on the fourth down as well. Um, Emeka had a ton of yards, but also made some mistakes. And uh, again, they're supposed to be the best core in the country, and they didn't look like the best core in the country to me. Uh, we grade based, based off of expectation, and their expectations were incredibly high. Yep, yep. By the All way, right, worth noting, to- the, the, the PA, the Notre Dame PA, um, we played DMX right, right before... Right, right before uh xavier got his uh, one and only catch of the game uh which leads me to believe that the pa people at notre dame were studying film better than the defensive coaches at notre dame all right let, let's move on to the defense here jared uh marv's catch <laughs> ruled an incompletion in three weeks in a row that the league officials have apologized uh you know Woody, that is a great point. That was a terrible overturn. And I think when the when the TV broadcast goes back to a play. Plays later. Brings the replay official, the 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 TV replay official back on the show plays after the fact to be like, hey, this was wrong, right? And he goes, yeah, that was wrong. It was, it was a terrible overturn Ooh. that they performed against Marvin Harrison. It's, it is worth noting. Thank mm-hmm. you for bringing that up, Woody. Yeah. Uh, defensive line here. <sighs> defensive tackle. So I'm going to split this up. So defensive tackle is A+. Plus. I think the defensive tackle has played extremely, extremely well, especially as the game went on. <sighs> they, were, they were feasting. They were feasting right down the middle there. And... And the defensive ends, I I thought for the most part, they they contained really well. There there was moments in the four, especially in the fourth quarter, you started you started feeling things start to slip away. Notre Dame was getting a lot more yards after after contact. And they were it seemed like that they were about to break one open there. Thankfully, they didn't. But. But when, when the defensive ends needed to make a play, a.k.a. JT, in that last drive there, he came up clutch there. So I'd, I'd give an A overall for the for the defensive line. I was I did, very, I, very, I very impressed, especially especially against this uh, offensive line where all five will probably be playing in the NFL eventually here. There's a very, very talented offensive line. I think this will be the best offensive line Ohio State will go up against all year. Uh. I did A plus A minus. You wanted to separate it, so I separated it. I did A plus A minus for the defensive tackles and the defensive ends. Mm-hmm. Um, if if not for JT on that last drive, uh, they would not have gotten the A minus. Um, mm-hmm. but since since J, JT JT pushed them back into the A category for sure. Um, so Kyle, what were your grades since you wanted to split them? A plus for the defensive tackles and an A for the for the ends there okay linebackers here i i felt like the linebackers didn't really have to do much i i I never really well i never really thought throughout the game here that the linebackers were played bad and they were the cause of long plays for notre dame notre dame didn't have that didn't have well actually they did they did have quite a few running play um um big plays on the ground there but when i'm looking at it it was all in the they had, i don't there, i think it was mainly had, in the third quarter and fourth quarters <laughs> when do we give lou a grade oh lou gets an f so i i give the linebackers probably an a i i think they did what they were supposed to do they didn't let up huge plays but yeah, I, I would say an A overall. I agree. Corners. All right. 
corners. Burke does Burke things there. I think Burke only let up one pass all game there. And yeah, they, they didn't let up that many that many long plays in the air there. I think there end up being just four plays of 15 or more yards in the air. So I, I thought they did pretty well. So I'd, I'd give the corners an A. Um, n- n- Nomad, I'm going to... N- n- Nomad and Zach, I'm going to back up Teddy on that one, actually. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> you earned that one and you know it. Um, the... Um, I, I don't remember Denzel Burke playing all night, which is exactly what you want. Um, Big Benosa had a pass interference call. Um, how, how successful outside of like the first two drives? Cause Notre Dame had a really good first two drives coming out of the game. Um, mm-hmm. outside of that, how successful would you have called Notre Dame's passing game? Ooh. So if I'm lo- if I'm looking that they, it, I wouldn't say it was all that successful. On honestly, I mean, yeah, they they had, they had some good, um, they had some good drives there, mainly going after, um, oh, what's his name, um, Evans, going after Evans, their tight end there, yeah, uh, just to like he just uses his size. He's a, he's, and he's it, a cheat code. Yeah, he, he was pretty much a cheat cheat code and he, he made some great catches there and, and, and sometimes you just gotta give your hat off and be like, hey, that was a great play. Move on to the next play here. But uh, yeah, I just I don't I'm just I I was trying to get a general feel for it because I feel like Notre Dame came out swinging real hard, first two drives. Um I don't know, I just don't feel like they're I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to decide if the cornerbacks, I think I'm just going to go with an A. Um, I think I'll just go with a straight A. Um, I'm not, not, I don't think I'm going to put a plus or a minus on it. Uh, if I was just grading Denzel Burke, it would be an A plus. I, I just don't know if he, I don't know if, I don't know if Notre Dame even tried to throw at him the entire game. I just don't even know if they tried. Safeties, I'm giving an A plus. I'm going to, I'm going to add in the plus for the safeties here. Proctor okay. Pro- Proctor was a beast in this game. And and you and you saw it uh, throughout the game there making making some great plays there and and heck even even uh, Sonny Styles. We we mentioned him earlier in the episode here just making that key fourth down uh yes, stop Matt. there. <sighs> yeah, A plus for me from the safeties. They didn't let up anything beyond them. And they and they made some sheer tackles and big plays up front. So yeah, A plus. I don't know. I don't know how much of this is on the safeties versus the play calling versus the linebackers. But I feel like whenever Notre Dame was passing the ball successfully, they were doing it over the middle. Um, yeah, the, 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 yeah. It was it was whenever Ohio State was playing zone, and they found the soft spot in the zone there, mainly for Evans or or um oh, what's what's his name um. Uh, Flores Flores was the other was the other player too yeah I don't know I might be incorrect about this I, I acknowledge that but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with just just the a on the safeties because I feel like the soft spots in the defense tend to tend to be deep middle yeah uh, I, I thought they did a great job coming up against the run we already talked about um Styles and Ransom's play on the fourth down sneak um the fullbacks are included with the running backs in the mat. Um, you forget about the squib. Yeah, Kyle, as we move on to kicking, I. How, how do you how do you screw up a squib? How do you script? How do you script the squib? Why, why would you let Sam Hartman get it back on the field? It's yes, it's not it's Ryan, Ryan Day's fault. fault. It's not Ryan Day's <laughs> fault. How do you screw up a squib? We, we, how many, how many, how many, co- how many major programs has a special, as a special teams coach, a dedicated special teams coach on, on the roster? I don't think it's most. I'd say all your major ones do. 
I don't know if that's true. Uh, Either way. So the kicking game, kicking game, I'd, I'd give, honestly, I'd probably give an A. I, I, know, I know people I, look back like, oh, just give me the minus because of the squib. You know, uh -huh, ultimately. That, yeah, that, no. See, outside of your condescending tone, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> But uh, Mirko, Mirko did a fantastic job of of punning, and, and yeah, they did. They didn't get to. Did they get any kickoff return yardage? Yeah, zero zero return yardage, both punt and kicking, for Notre Dame. But the squib. Oh, an A. Why would you let Sam Hartman get back on the field? It's an A. Why would you let Sam Hartman get back on the field? I, I I'm doing an A minus for the kicker. When you just just they 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 lose they lose a they lose a grade for the well, that that ball sure. can't go out of bounds. All right, Jared. I think he was hoping the squib would hit a player to run the clock out. Cool. Don't kick it anywhere near the sidelines. I understand <laughs> what they were thinking. It was the execution that was the issue. I understand the thought. I, I understand the thought. It was the execution I had an issue with. If Notre Dame comes uh, back with a bomb after that kick, we're giving him way less than an A. But okay, but like realistically, you let Hartman back on the field. Maybe you get like a deep pass interference which gets them close enough to maybe bomb the ball, but just like, why risk it? Uh, we mentioned the commentator pronouncing Mirko like micro. It's micro. Listen, listen I'm, I'm never going to rip on anyone else for uh, mispronouncing a name. I'm, I'm just, that would be hypocritical of me. I, that, that that's just not a thing I'm ever going to do. That's that's I live in a very, very clear glass house when it <laughs> comes to mispronouncing names. Yes. All right. All right. We're moving on to the Buckeye leaves, Jared. We give a Buckeye leave for someone on the offense, defense and a wild card. Who do you, who do you got for your offensive player? Uh, do, I, do, do I say the obvious thing? I mean, I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go McCord. He he stepped mm -hmm. up when it mattered most. Um, he gets his first big road game of his career. It's not gonna be his last. I'll say I've already said it. I'll say it again. Um, I, I'll, I'll like I said I said it before. I'll say it again. He is. Once the game slows down for him, he's going to be dangerous. Once the game yeah. slows down for McCord, he's going to be very, very dangerous. Yep. Yeah. McCord, McCord is a obvious answer. I'm going. I'll go with. I'll go with Ibuka here, with with them pretty much double teaming Marv. You got to go to your number two receiver, and he's and he's stepped up here. Seven catches, ninety six yards, and uh, yeah, he did have that one drop there, which sucks. But yeah, I, I give my Buckeye leaf to Ibuka. Uh, I would say the chat is saying chip mostly. I think it was, there was a lot of chip. There was a lot of tray, but I think chip won out. All right. All right. Defensive side here. I'm going to go with the ransom. Ransom had a fantastic game here. Led the team in tackles. He had 13 here. Um, you could easily put in a lot of other names here. Proctor, Styles, uh, Tui Milau. Don't steal my answers. Well, my, my, my answer is, is a ransom here. And, and don't forget about the big slobs in the middle there. Tyleek and Mike Hall. A lot, a lot of names you could put here on the defense. I'm, and that, that's where I'm going to go. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very torn between Tyleek and Hall. Um, I'm going to go Tyleek. I really could have just as easily gone Hall. I, I thought the defensive tackles played great. Um, yeah, I'll go. I'll go Tyleek <laughs> Williams. All right. Uh, what is I think chat? What? I think they're giving it to Sunny Styles. All right. All right. Good call. All right. And a wild card here. 
you know, I'll, I'll give mine to, uh, I'll give mine to Tui Malau. It, when, when, when your leader, when your best, one of your best players needs to make a play, he, he did it. He did twice in that last drive there. So, uh, by the way, for the wild card, the chat, like, yep. rang out <laughs> for Ryan Day. Fair, fair so enough. The, the chat says Ryan Day. Um, no, Coach Nomad also said Lou Holtz, which is a funnier answer. Um, I'm I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm a man of the people. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with Ryan Day. Um, <laughs> if for nothing else than the fiery post game speech. Um, yes. Yeah. Lou Holtz gets a cup of shut the front door. <laughs> All right, uh, let's answer a few questions here, Jared. Uh, Nomad in our Discord here. Why are Ohio State fans such disbelievers when things get tough? Because college football forces us to be irrational creatures. Um, before the playoff system, college football treated us to think that um, a, a loss was the end of the season. There's just no margin for error. It's a it's a it's the one sport where perception actually really matters. If the perception that your program, if if the perception says that your program sucks, then your program will start to suck because recruiting will suck. Um, so there's just no margin for error in sports. Um, there's or in, in college football. Um, I, I wonder. I wonder what because so like. In the BCS era and the pre-BCS era, you couldn't lose a game. If you wanted to win a national title, you, you the only way you knew you were going to get a national title is if you go, if you went undefeated. Then then the playoff system comes in, and then Kyle and I, you know, we we invent the Mario Man system where you get one Mario Man, you get one life, you get one extra life, you get one up. Now now that the playoff system starting next year goes to twelve. And if you like, if winning the Big Ten, basically, even if it's not an auto, if winning the Big Ten essentially gets you into the playoffs, which I think it will. Well, now perception doesn't even matter anymore at that point. You're in control of winning the Big Ten. Yeah, I, I think I think at that uh, that last drive for Notre Dame, especially after they got the back-to-back -back first downs even, even us in, in our in our channel jared and i think most of buckeye nation was already in acceptance right now it's like oh okay ohio state's going to lose this what does that mean what what's what what does ohio state have to do to moving forward like we were already accepting that the game was already over and then jt decided to come and said uh-uh nope watch this yeah um yeah it's it's the usher meme watch this oh you think the game's mm -hmm. over what but by the but what was kyle what was the final drive for notre dame i i was talking about it earlier what was it they they got like two or three first downs in a row if you yeah. thought the game was over at that point i don't blame you the game looked notre dame just had to run the clock out and they got two or three first downs immediately on the ground. If you thought the game was over in that moment, I do not blame you. I never quit. I'm I never quit. I've watched too many football games. I've seen too many turnovers. I've seen. I didn't quit. Um, imagine OSU dropping three spots after winning our first three games. One of those. Uh, being a conference win and then beating a top 10 team at their place and going back to where Ohio state started the season. Oh, wait, that would never happen to any other team. I will die on that Hill here. <laughs> I like that picture. You just, here's the thing, Matt, it doesn't matter. The polls don't matter. I'm, I'm, I almost brought something up. I almost brought something up on um, 
sloop picks or maybe it was collegiate chaos uh no it would have been sloop picks i think last week um there there were of the 25 teams in the ap top 25 24 of them were undefeated or excuse me 21 of them were undefeated four teams four teams had one loss kyle what was the conference breakdown don't look it up this is not a look it up kyle look it up situation what were the four teams? What co- break breakdown of conference? What are the four teams? Yeah, bre- broken down by conference. Four teams in the top 25 had one loss. What conference break broke down? Like three in the SEC, one in the Big Ten. Like how, how did you think that broke down? I know Ohio State had one. No, no, no. Teams with one loss. How many teams with a loss were ranked in the AP last week? Twenty. Oh yeah, there, 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 there was, there was. Oh, oh, I see, I see what you, I see what you mean. Okay. Twenty-one teams were undefeated in the AP pre last week. Mm-hmm. Four teams had one loss. Broken down by conference, who were those four teams? Conference I membership would, of those four teams, would you bet? I would say at least three of them were SEC. You would be correct. Well, who was the fourth one? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll help you out here, Kyle. It was also an SEC team. Oh. <laughs> you said at least three. And by the way, the chat was way ahead of you on that one. Um, SEC, all one loss, all four SEC, all in the SEC, all one loss teams are SEC, all SEC, I'm sure, all four of those are SEC. <laughs> the chat was all over on top of that, man. <laughs> there you go, Jared. There's the last drive for you. Okay. Um, 12 yards. Yeah. So if you lost faith in this last drive. It was that second first down. It was that second first down, and there was yeah. like three. It was like, what is that? Yeah, three minutes left in the game. Three minutes. Three left. minutes. Left. They get their second first down on an eleven-yard run. If you if you got real nervous at that point, I don't blame you. The second first down broke me, Austin. Most people felt that way. Yeah, hundred percent. I felt that way. I'll be honest. I felt that way. I was like, crap. Ohio State, and even before that drive, Ohio State was letting up a lot more um, yards on the ground there. I'm like, oh, they're just going to run it down. They're just going to run down the throat. And then JT happened. All right. Anyway, um, I brought all the thing up about the SEC just to say that the polls don't matter and you shouldn't worry about them. That, that, that was my entire point with so, that. The polls don't matter. So the la- last question the, here. The AP I know- poll has not been relevant for 10 years. Period. All right, uh, last question here, because we're Who coming cares? up on the hour on the hour mark here. Uh, Coach Nomad says, the, did Ryan Day ever fi- find out what hole Lou Holtz crawled into at the end of the game? Well, I- I'll tell you that that hole is probably his bed because he was probably already asleep um two to three hours into his sleep already how old is lou holtz uh there, there's a second option for that for, for where, where that hole may have been i'm just saying i'm gonna say that then he's actually gonna die and then i'm gonna feel bad not really <laughs> um he's 86 i tell you what he doesn't look good i wouldn't have guessed mm-hmm. he was under 90 no, nah, him, him and Corso, these last last few years have not done well for them. No. But that's it, Jared. That is it as we are coming up on the hour mark here. Any last thoughts about the Ohio State-Notre Dame game? Other than Notre Dame I, still, I, can't, still can't beat Ohio State. Um, it's been, what, since the 30s? Since the 30s that they've beat Ohio State? Has right? it been that long? I believe so. 
Let me let me pull it up real quick here as as you're ending the up. episode. Pull it up. Um, shout out to Abuka for uh, stepping up with Marv a little banged up. Uh, he stepped up for Marv just with Marv being double covered all night, um, even before the injury. Uh, Coach Nomad says 1936. All right. Uh, we're way over. I'll just say, come join the Discord server. Come join the Patreon. We've had a bunch of people sign up recently. I appreciate all of you. Kaz is a new member. Um, Yedis is a new member. Um, I know we had a, I think we had, uh, we have a bunch of mats. We've had a, we've had a run of mats re <laughs> joining as well. Um, so yeah, just want to thank everyone for, for signing up for the discord and for the Patreon. Like I said, we've had a, a really great run of, of people recently, and I appreciate that. Uh, if you want to come join this team, Kyle has the stats up on his screen there. Uh, all time, Ohio State is six and two against Notre Dame with a six game win streak. This team is giving me 2014 vibes. Pump the brakes. Hey, hey, I, I you know what? Now pump the gas, pump the gas. Listen, being cautious never won anyone anything. And, unless, of course, you went uh, 0 for 2 on fourth downs. Like like a certain Notre Dame team did. Um, you know how many times I heard pump the brakes in 2014? Yeah, but to be fair, uh, I also heard pump the brakes in uh, several seasons in between, too. <laughs> That's, yeah. That is what you call survivor's bias. Uh, all right. All right. That's the end of the show. That's the end of the show. Um, Discord.thesloopcast.com. Uh, Patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, tonight's ending music brought to you by a band out of Dayton. They are called Abertooth Lincoln. The name of the band is Abertooth Lincoln. Uh, this one's uh, loud and chaotic. And if you like loud, chaotic punk music, then stick around. Um, if not, uh, stick around anyway. Expose yourself to something new. Why not? What are you scared? Are you scared? No, sir. So with all that being on. said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, of course, watch local podcasters. Once again, this is Abertooth Lincoln.